Hello and welcome here to Talk SCP and welcome back here to the channel guys and welcome to the first ever La Liga podcast here on the channel. Every single week I'm going to be doing a podcast on La Liga, looking at the results, looking at the fixtures and a lot more. But today we're going to be looking at everything that's happened over the summer ahead of the new season which does begin tonight. There's some very, very exciting teams and there's some very interesting transfers that we're going to be having a look at. We're going to be doing some predictions towards the end of the video, what we can expect from the teams in the coming season and we're also going to be having a look at some very, very interesting managerial changes. There's been some very good changes, I think, from clubs, which could certainly help them in the coming season. So if we first have a look at some of those interesting managerial changes, of course, we all know about Ernesto Valverde, who left Athletic at the end of last season. He will be, of course, manager of Barcelona in the coming season. But in his place at Athletic comes Cuco Ziganda. He's actually been promoted from within. He was manager of the, uh, the B team of Athletic, and he also was there as a player, he played as a forward for Athletic for a number of years. He's come in as their coach, and they had a very good result last night. They were 2-0 down away in the Europa League qualifiers against Panathinaikos, and they actually came back because of uh, Arat Adaris, of course, Benjamin Button, as he's been known now. He scored two goals, brilliant goals, and they actually came out to win 3-2. So a fantastic result last night for Athletic away from home against Panathinaikos, and a really good start to the managerial career of Kugo Zaganda. Voro has left for Valencia, and he's going to be replaced by former Villarreal coach Marcelino. That's a very exciting one for me. I was really impressed with what Marcelino did at Villarreal. You know, they went very deep in the Europa League under his stewardship and they were a very, very good team. We played good football as well. So that's going to be an exciting one for the season ahead. I'm also very, very excited. This managerial change took place actually within last season. Uh, Kike Setien was brought in to replace Victor Sanchez at Real Betis. And we all saw the fantastic work that Kike Setien did whilst he was at Las Palmas. So it's going to be really interesting to see what he can do this summer at Real Betis. He've also made some very, very good signings. We're going to be coming over onto those in just a minute. Uh, Eduardo Barrizzo left to go to Sevilla. He replaced George Sampaoli, who of course is the now the Argentina coach and in Barrizzo's place at Celta is now a man that we all know quite well, Juan Carlos Unzue, the former Barcelona assistant coach when Luis Enrique was in charge. Unzue is going to pit himself as a manager in his own right and it's going to be interesting to see exactly how he does in the coming season. So there's quite a lot of exciting changes, quite a lot of new faces in terms of the way that they're going to go about their business. Mauricio Pellegrino as well, the manager of Alaves, did fantastically well last season, took them to the Copa del Rey final. He's gone to the Premier League. He's now manager of Southampton and Luis Zabeldia will come in to replace him at Alaves in the coming season. <laughs> So, you know, obviously last season, Real Madrid won the league by three points in the end. Barcelona second, Atletico Madrid third, Sevilla came in fourth with Villarreal and Real Sociedad taking up the Europa League places. Last season, though, we lost Sporting Gijón, which is a real shame because I always enjoyed the atmosphere at El Molinón. You know, really good stadium, good vibes coming out of that club. A shame that they've gone down, but they had serious money problems, of course, as many clubs do in La Liga. Osasuna also joined them. They'll be in the Segunda next season, along with Granada, who propped up the rest a really, really bad season for Granada in the end. But joining us in the top flight this season will once again be Levante and Hitafe, two very much you know established La Liga teams who've been around for a long long time, up and down a little bit but they are back in the Primera Division this season and also Hirona will be joining them which is I'm very very excited to see what they can do because they're a good team, they play good football and of course they're actually very close to Barcelona in terms of location but they're not quite the arch rivals that say Espanyol will be it'll be a really good occasion next season when we go to Hirona, so I'm really excited to see what they can do in the coming season. But what I want to do is have a look at some transfers, because of course that is where it breaks down, and I think that's the case for every club. Every club needs to improve, you know, it needs to build on what they can do, and I think a lot of the La Liga clubs, the real challenge does come in the summer, because a lot of the time, clubs in La Liga lose their best players, they've got to replace them, they don't have big budgets, they don't really get to always spend the money that they get in, so it's very, very interesting to look at what the teams have done this season on modest budgets once again, but there have been some some very, very interesting signings and some exciting players that we could be seeing in the coming season. So we're going to run for the transfers in the way the league table went last season. So we're going to start with Real Madrid and the business that they've done this summer. They are healthily in profit for the current season because, uh, you know, they, they, they sold some very important players for them. The likes of Alvaro Morata played a massive part last season. He's headed to Chelsea for around 65 million euros. They've sold Danilo to Manchester City, 30 million euros. And they've also loaned out James Rodriguez on a loan 
going to Bayern Munich. That was a 10 million euro loan fee. They've also sold uh, quite promising youngster Mariano Diaz to Lyon for around 8 million euros. And he's actually had a really good start at Lyon, the young striker. So that could possibly be seen as a mistake in years to come. I'm quite surprised to see that they've sold Diego Llorente. He really impressed last season when he was out on loan. He's actually gone to Real Sociedad for 6 million euros. And they've sold Bergi to Alaves for 3 million. So all together, they've actually got in 122 million euros simply from sales alone. They have signed some players though. They brought in Theo Hernandez and Danny Ceballos, two young players, two exciting young talents in La Liga. Theo Hernandez coming in from Atletico Madrid, around 30 million euros they paid for his services. And Danny Ceballos coming in for his release clause from Real Betis, around 17 million euros that deal cost in total. Also, Barcelona were interested in both of those players, but both of them ended up going to Real Madrid. In terms of Barcelona, it has been a very, very difficult summer, of course, played by the loss of Neymar for 222 million euros. He left for his release clause, and they have struggled to replace him, and they've struggled to actually get in their main targets. In this window, Paulinho has come in from Guangzhou Evergrande for 40 million euros. Semedo from Benfica for around 30 million. Uh, Gerard De La Feia returned to the club from Everton because of a buyback clause, costing us 12 million euros. And also in our expenditure will be Marlon, who came in from Fluminense for around 5 million euros, it is believed. In terms of player sales, Neymar, of course, the big one in that, but also Christian Teo went for Real Betis, 4 million euros for him. Massip left on a free, and so as well did Jeremy Machu, who went to Sporting Lisbon. But altogether, Barcelona this summer are in profit right now of 138 million euros, of course, thanks to that big sale of Neymar. In terms of Atletico Madrid, they've had a, a quite a difficult summer. You know, they're, of course, transfer banned right now, so they can't sign any players. And although they can't sign anyone, they can technically agree deals and actually get them done in the winter window in January. So that's what they have been doing. It is believed that Vitola will be going to Atletico Madrid. He was at Sevilla. He'll spend the six months on loan at Las Palmas and then expected to join up with Atletico Madrid in January for his release clause of 36 million euros. But that's the only real business they've done right now. They're still trying to re-sign Diego Costa from Chelsea, yet another one that's sort of gone a bit AWOL. Chelsea don't want him, but at the same time, they don't want to sell him to Atletico Madrid for a low fee, so they're still negotiating over that one. But right now, Atletico Madrid unable to bring anyone in at least until the start of the new year. They have sold some players, though, of course. We mentioned earlier they sold Teo Hernandez to Real Madrid around 30 million euros. There wasn't really much they could do about that. Teo wanted to go, despite his brother playing for Atletico Madrid. They've sold Oliver Torres, quite an exciting young midfielder we saw in La Liga quite a few seasons ago, but he has been at Porto now for a while. He actually went there on a permanent deal now for around 20 million euros. They sold Matthias Kranoviter to uh, Zenit St. Petersburg, 8 million. Have Manquillo went to Newcastle for 5 million million and Dio has been sold to newly promoted Hitafe for 3 million euros and they have let Alessio Cerchi go on a free transfer to Hellas Verona. What an absolute failure of a transfer that was. Alessio Cerchi has been an absolute nightmare for Atletico Madrid. Never lived up to his price tag and he has not been a success. There we go on to Sevilla who've had a very very busy summer and it was interesting to see what Sevilla did this summer because of course in the past they've always lost their best players but they've always managed to replace them with real bargains in the market. They always seem to spend well. They sell well as well, they get good fees for their players and then they bring in new talent but that was under the stewardship of course of sporting director Monchi who's now gone to Roma it was interesting to see this summer how Sevilla sort of reacted to that and how they continued with their business model and I must say I'm pretty impressed with their business they seem to have brought in good players once again of course they've sold players we spoke about Vitolo who will go to Atletico Madrid they also sold their captain Vincent Ibora who will go to Leicester City around 15 million euros that transfer they, they sold as well which I was quite surprised actually they sold yeah then Conor Palanca to Schalke for around 12 million euros. I was really surprised. They loaned him out last season and I thought they might give him another try because every time I've seen Conor Palanca, he's looked dangerous, he's looked good on the ball, he's looked like he suits La Liga very, very comfortably, but they have decided to sell him on. Adel Rami's left the club for 6 million. Mariano's gone to Galatasaray, Cristoforo to Fiorentina. So as you can see, a lot of players have gone out from Sevilla. But coming in, Luis Muriel has been brought in, the big money signing from Sampdoria. He has been very, very very prolific in Serie A over the past few seasons. Double digits for goals. Very, very comfortable playing off the front. Uh, 20 million euros he was brought in. They've also brought in strong centre-back Simon Kier from Fenerbahce. Around 12 million euros for that one to strengthen up their centre defence. They brought in a very, very established La Liga player in Nolito from Manchester City who didn't really hit off there with under Pep Guardiola. 9 million euros Nolito has come back.
back for in La Liga. Eva Benegra has returned to the club from Inter Milan, 9 million there. They brought in Corcia from Lille. I think that's a really, really good signing. Just 5 million euros for the 26 year old right back, Corcia, coming in from Liga 1. And I think he's a really good signing. He's a really good right back. He goes forward well, but he's also very solid defensively. And I think that could be a real steal for just 5 million euros. And as well, they brought back their saviour, Jesus Navas, from Manchester City. He was let go on a free transfer. His contract was at an end, and he has returned to Sevilla. So it's going to be interesting to see how all those players gel, how quickly they can get that going. And of course, what Eduardo Barizzo is going to do at Sevilla this season. They were very, very impressive last season under Jorge Sampoli, who's gone out to Argentina. He impressed very much so in his role at Sevilla. It's going to be interesting to see how they gel under De Barizzo, who does play a very expansive style of play. He does like to play passing football, and it's going to be interesting to see how they perform in La Liga this season. Villarreal are ones that I think are very, very exciting this season as well. They've got, you know, very good signings. I think they brought in Ruben Semedo from Sporting Lisbon, the centre-back, just 23 years old. He's a really, really good centre-back. Strong, he's very physical, but he's also very athletic. You know, he's, he's not bad getting around the pitch, and I think he'll really suit Villarreal and their style of play. They've brought an exciting youngster, NS Unal, as well, from Manchester City on a permanent deal, that one, for around €14 million. Euros. And I think one of the signings of the summer could be Pablo Fornals, who comes in from Malaga. 12 million euros, that one is release clause. And I think he could be a real hit at Villarreal. I think he suits them. I think he's a really good player. He's a young player, just 21 years old. And I think he could really, really grow and have a real breakthrough season in La Liga in the coming term. And another signing I think the Villarreal have made, which is an excellent, excellent signing, they have brought in Carlos Baca on loan from AC Milan. Around 2.5 million loan fee. And I think he could be massive. I think at AC Milan, it didn't really work out for him. But at the same time, Milan the past few years have been going through a transitional period. They haven't been playing at the AC Milan level that we all know and love. But I think back of this season, back in La Liga, where I think he's most suited, playing as a striker for Villarreal, getting football week in, week out. I think back, at, back in La Liga, he's only 30 years old. He's still got a lot to give. I think he could be a great signing and a really, really good addition to this team. They've also brought in Andreas Fernandez, the goalkeeper from Port. Porto, 2 million euros for that one. So I think overall, Villarreal have really strengthened this summer. They have sold uh, Matteo Mustachio, though, this summer. He has gone to AC Milan, 18 million euros. Good centre-back, but he was quite injury-prone in his time at Villarreal towards the end, certainly. They've also loaded Roberto Soldado. He's gone to Fenerbahce for 5 million euros. And Jonathan De Santos has joined his brother at LA Galaxy. He's gone to the MLS for around 4.3 million euros. But I think overall, Villarreal have had a really good summer. They've strengthened strengthened in a lot of positions and I think they could do really good things in La Liga in the coming season. And now we come on to Real Sociedad, of course, who are under the stewardship of former Barcelona B coach Eusebio Sacristan. And they've had a decent summer. They brought in Adnan Yanazai for 8.5 million euros from Manchester United. I think that was a bit of a gamble, personally. I think it's quite a bit of money for somebody who hasn't really proven himself in the past few years. He's been floating between clubs. He's been out on a lot of loans. It's important for Yanazai himself now that he really establishes himself in La Liga and at Real Sociedad. I think he's, he's got a, a big chance here to prove himself, to really explode the talent that we saw very, very early on in his career, and I think it's important that he does this right now because he needs to make a statement. He's 22 years old now. He needs to start maturing. He needs to start getting that talent together and giving it this season for Real Sociedad. I mentioned earlier, Diego Llorente has gone to Sociedad. That's a good signing from Real Madrid. They've signed very, very good young players, you know, 23 years old. But in terms of that, Sociedad this season haven't actually done a lot of business, which I think is quite wise because I think last season under Eusebio, Sociedad looked like a unit. They looked like a team. We knew what they were doing. They understand their style of play. They had some very, very good players already. I think the most important thing this summer for them was trying to keep hold of as many players as they possibly could. The two players that have departed, the two notable absentees from their team would be Yuri Pachiche, the left-back who's gone to Paris Saint-Germain, around 16 million euros they got for him, and he was really impressive last season down that left-hand side. A really important part of the system, you know, the full-backs, but they played very, very well, you know, with Yuri Pachiche at that left-back role, so it's going to be interesting to see how he's replaced in the coming season. And another player who has headed to the MLS is Carlos Vela, 
he's left the club for around 5 million euros. But he has been a bit of trouble in recent years, Vela. His commitment hasn't always been there. So I think Sotina can certainly move on from them. And I think they've got a really, really good striker in Willie and Jose. And they've got a lot of good young players around the club as well that could certainly blossom this season and give them once again a solid season in La Liga. Now we move on to Athletic Club. And I have to say, in terms of departures and arrivals here, there is not much at all to report. We all know about Athletic's transfer policy. They only sign players who are from the Basque region. And for that reason, they have not spent a single penny this summer. They have not brought anyone in. They have had a few players return from loans. They've been trying to bring in players from the Basque region. But of course, it isn't easy to do that. And in terms of their sales, they have also not made a single penny. So there has been no money at all moving between Athletic this summer. They have let Gorka Arizos, the veteran goalkeeper, leave for newly promoted Hirona, but he left on a free transfer. El Estondo has gone on a free transfer as well. There have been a few loans here and there, but in terms of business at Athletic this summer, there is not an awful lot happening. But of course, they've got their fantastic fans. They've got the brilliant atmosphere inside their stadium. It's a very daunting place to go. They've got a united group of players. They've got a very, very good pool of young players coming through as well. Of course, they always do have players coming out of their academy and their B teams. And I think it's important this season that once again, Athletic are all together and are playing in the way they know, with passion, with drive, with heart, and that'll get them through the La Liga season. They don't need signings. They've got their club values. In terms of Espanyol, they've had a pretty moderate summer because, of course, they had new owners. Last season, of course, they spent a lot of money. They got a new players through the door, and they had a decent season under Kike Sanchez Flores, but this season, they've been a little bit more modest in the market. They brought in 28-year-old centre-back Naldo from Krasnodar for 2.5 million euros. That could be a good signing. You know, he's a good centre-back. I think you could certainly do a job for them. They've got Pablo Piatti on a permanent deal now from Valencia, just 1.3 million euros they paid for him, 28 years old now. He had a really, really good season last season on loan at Espanyol, so that's a good signing to make that one permanent. They've also made the signing of Diego Lopez, the goalkeeper permanent from AC Milan for around 1 million euros, so another decent deal there for them. And I think, again, just like you know, a few other clubs, it's about keeping their players together, about keeping their project going, and I think Espanyol have done a good job of that this summer. They have made a few sales, though. Felipe Caicedo, their powerful forward, a very, very good player in La Liga over the past few seasons, has gone to Lazio, 2.5 million euros for that one. Silla has gone to Yupin. Jordan has gone to Abar. So there have been a few sales, but nothing too major for Espanyol. I think they could probably have a decent season once again as Kike Sanchez Flores can keep building his team, keep trying to improve them as a unit to understand their roles. And I think they've kept most of their squad together, which is the most important thing for them. Now we move on to Deportivo Alaves, who of course, like I mentioned earlier, are under new management this summer due to the departure of Mauricio Pellegrino to Southampton. They've made the permanent signing of Rodrigo Eli from AC Milan around 3 million euros. He was on loan with them last season and he did have a good season with Alaves. They've also made the signing of Bergi from Real Madrid, which I mentioned earlier on, for 3 million euros. And they brought in a number of players to bolster their squad, a lot of them on free signings, one of them being Enzo Zidane from Real Madrid Castilla. So it'll be interesting to see how he adapts to La Liga football. But a lot of free transfers coming in for, for Alaves, a lot of loans as well. So it's a club that's operated on a very, very tight budget and they'll be looking to use all of that squad depth this season and the coming La Liga season because they haven't also sold many players. And once again, that's the most important thing, keeping their squad together, keeping hold of their best players. They did sell Edgar Mendes to Cruz Azul. He's gone there for around 5 million euros. That's a really good return for that player for them. They've also sold Fidel to Real Betis for 2.5 million euros. Kiko Femeni has gone to Watford on a free transfer. And that's about it in terms of sales. So they've kept a lot of the players that got them to the Copa del Rey final. They performed pretty well in that final, it has to be said. And they did have a very solid La Liga season. I think it was one of those where they had a very, very good season for most of it. They reached the Copa del Rey final. And then possibly during the latter stages of the season, they were a little bit distracted. They rotated their squad a lot. They struggled for a bit of form in the league because their mind was solely on what it was that one of the biggest games in their history. Although they were a club that really did compete in Europe for a long time, Alaves. And they have had some very, very historic nights in here in history over the last few years, but that is going back quite a way now to the early 2000s. <laughs> A 
Bar is always a very interesting club when it comes to transfers and departures as well. It's always interesting to see what sort of business they're doing. They're a club that, of course, is run on very, very small money as well. You know, you look at their stadium, just a 5,000-seater stadium. But they've been outstanding in their time in La Liga. They really have. For the money that they spend, for, you know, their club expenditure, they have done a really impressive job as a team. And they made a big sale this summer. Florian Lejeune has gone to the Premier League to Newcastle for around 10 million euros. That was a really, really big sale for them. That's a lot of money for a club like Abar, and they brought in Paulo Oliveira from Sporting Lisbon to replace him. He cost them 3.5 million euros, which I believe is their club record signing by some distance. They also brought in Marco Dimitrovic from Alcoron for around 1 million euros, the goalkeeper, which I think they desperately needed now for a past few years, Abar, a solid goalkeeper, because of course they've had a few goalkeepers over the past few seasons, but none of them at all have been reliable. So I think that could be a really good signing to bring in somebody who possibly is more dependable between the sticks. They've also brought Joan Jordan from uh, Espanyol for around 1 million euros, but it's been a lot of those signings, like I mentioned, a lot of these clubs don't have much money, it's a lot of free transfers, there's a few transfers there, you know, Yol Rodriguez, Ivan Alejo, in the thousands, you know, 700,000, 300,000 transfer fees, so this still exists, you know, you look at the Premier League, there's a lot of millions being thrown around, but in La Liga, they're still looking for bargains, they're still looking for cheap signings to bring in, simply because the money right now is not there for a lot of the clubs. Malaga are a club that I I am extremely worried about this season and I really am because I just don't think they've signed good enough players and I think they've sold a lot of their best players and they don't seem to have reinvested the money that they've got from sales this summer. They have actually made 33 million euros from player sales this summer. They sold Ignacio Camacho to Wolfsburg which I think is going to be a massive massive loss to them. He went for 15 million euros his release clause but he's a massive cog in that midfield for Malaga. He holds their system together he's been a consistent performer over the last few seasons and of course I mentioned earlier on the signing for Villarreal. Pablo from now is another big loss for Malaga 12 million euros. Sandra Ramirez last season was outstanding for Malaga one of the biggest goal scorers in their team. He's left to go to Everton for just 6 million euros. Again the release clauses in Spain are really causing problems for some clubs. Charles, another goal scorer for Malaga, has gone to Abar on a free transfer. He could be a really good signing for Abar. I think he scores goals, he's established in La Liga, and to bring him in on a free transfer could be really, really smart business for Abar. But it is a loss for Malaga. They've also lost their goalkeeper, Carlos Kameni. He's gone to Fenabachi on a free transfer. They've lost Ricardo Horto, who's gone to Baraga on a free transfer. And of course, they've lost both of their goalkeepers. Kameni's gone to Fenabachi, and Ochoa has gone to San Liège. So I think it's a really, really difficult summer for them. Di Michaelis retired. Wellington retired. A lot of their players have departed this summer and I cannot see personally they brought a awful lot of quality in. They've signed Emmanuel Caccini from Banfield from Argentina for 4 million euros. Of course not an established player. Diego Gonzalez has come in from Sevilla Athletic for 500,000 euros. But a lot of their signings have been free transfers and loans. The one good player that I do think they brought in is Borja Baston who's come in on loan from Swansea. He of course had a fantastic season at Eibar before he left for the Premier League since he's got there. He's been suffering with a lot of injuries he didn't really hit it off in the Premier League with Swansea so he's got a chance now to rejuvenate his career and now for a club which I all feel have been underachieving in the past few seasons Valencia haven't been tremendously busy this summer but I think the most important thing for them was the managerial change that I discussed earlier I think Marcelino can come in he can give them some fresh ideas he can give the club an identity and I think the most important thing with Valencia is making sure the crowd is on their side because at the Mestalla if, if the atmosphere is good if the crowd are on side it can be an outstanding place to go you know it can be a really difficult place to go and get a win but if the crowd aren't with them it can be a very very poisonous atmosphere it can be very very detrimental to the players and of course there's been a lot of discussions about Peter Lim his ownership of the club is he running the club in the right way well this summer he signed Simone Zaza on a permanent deal from Juventus for around 16 million euros they've also signed uh, UV, Juve's number two goalkeeper Neto this summer for around 6 million they've made the uh, signing of Oriana permanent for 3 million euros but other other than that, Valencia this summer have not done a great deal. I know they're still trying to sign a centre-back at least. They're still trying to bring in a number of players towards the end of this window. They've sold quite a few players. 16 million euros in all have been generated from player sales. Matthew Ryan went to Brighton for around 6 million euros. Enzo Perez went back to Argentina to River Plate for 5 million. Negredo went to Besiktas for 2.5. I mentioned earlier on Pablo Piatti going to um, Espanyol for 1.3 million euros. Adelaide Santos has 
has left the club on Yon. Yoel has left the club to go to Avar. So I think, you know, there's some interesting signings, of course, you know, from Valencia. But I don't think they've done an awful lot this summer. I think if Marcelino can get his squad playing the right way and can get the squad, you know, improving and get the fans on side, they could have a better season. I think they've got to start performing at home. They've got to start being a bit more consistent. And I think they've certainly got to start, you know, scoring some goals and getting that crowd excited again and you know, use that crowd to the best of your ability. Celta Vigo now under the stewardship, like I mentioned earlier on, of Unzue. It's going to be really, really interesting to see what he can do with them this season. They look very, very good in a pre-season friendly that I watched them against Roma. They played some really good football, really good passing football. And uh, they've not been incredibly busy this summer, Celta Vigo. You know, they brought in a few players, a lot of them really unknown, though, to me especially. I think Labodka's come in from Norchland, the centre midfielder, for around €5 million. Euros. Maximiliano Gomez, a Uruguayan centre-forward, has come in from defender in Uruguay for around €4 million. Josebed has come in, the midfielder from Fulham, for around €3.5 million. Euros. But apart from that, they haven't brought in an awful lot of players. They haven't sold a lot either, though. They've sold Oriana, which I mentioned, to Valencia, but that happened last season anyway. He went out on loan. Also, Bon Gonder has gone to transfer Transanspor for a loan deal for around €400,000. But apart from that, they haven't really done an awful lot of business. They've, they've tried to keep their squad together. You know, the likes of Iago Aspas, you know, Was, very important players for them. They've managed to keep hold of. So that's the most important thing for Celta in the coming season. And Nzui, I'm sure, knows what he wants. So it'll be interesting to see what he can do in the coming season. In terms of the last Parmas, Another club that haven't been tremendously busy. The biggest player that they have, I believe, would be Vitolo. He's going to be there until January uh, because of Atletico Madrid, of course, can't sign him and can't officially register him yet. So he's going to spend that time at Las Palmas. They've signed Jonathan Caleri, who was recently on loan at West Ham United. It didn't really work out for him there. He's a striker that's going to come in on loan for the coming season. They haven't done an awful lot in terms of business, though. They have made a very important sale for their club. Roque Mesa has gone to Swansea City. I think an absolute steal at 12.5 million euros the 28 year old centre midfielder was a massive part of everything good that Las Palmas have been doing over the coming season and a very surprised decision uh, Kevin Prince Boateng just a few days before the season was about to start he actually had to cancel his contract what he described was personal reasons the club agreed to that and he is now no longer registered with the Las Palmas and could be expected to sign for German club Frankfurt in the coming days so Las Palmas haven't done a great deal and they've lost a very very important player in in Rocky Mesa, but they are a club that I really enjoy watching. You know, they're very good on the ball. They play a passing style of play. Once again, they've got a good atmosphere at their home games. And I think if they can get the right sort of players in before the end of the window, I still think they're looking to, to bolster their squad. They can have another good season in La Liga, playing the way they do. Very, very pleasing on the eye. <laughs> And now for one of the clubs who I think have, have been the best this summer in terms of the business that they've done, not only in terms of transfers, but also Kike Setien in charge of Real Betis will be really, really impressive this season. Setien, when he was at Las Palmas, played a fantastic style of play. They played a really, really good football. And I think it's going to be really interesting to see how we can implement that at Real Betis because Betis is a club that I always think, you know, when we go to play them, they're always very, very physical. They like to get in with a challenge. And Setien's not really that way inclined. And he's made a lot of signings this summer and a lot of really exciting signings signings I have to say one of the signings of the season could be Sergio Leon he's come in from relegated Osasuna he had an outstanding season last season even though they ended up going down he's come in for just 3.5 million euros another signing which could be considered one of the signings of the season at the end of it is Andres Guardado he's come in from PSV just 2.5 million euros but he is so, so good, and he's so, so versatile as well. He's been really, really good in the Eredivisie of late, and he could bring a lot to Real Betis in the coming season. They've also signed Victor Camarasa, a really good centre midfielder from uh, newly promoted Levante. He's coming for €7 million. Euros. Riyad Boudabou is coming from Montpellier for around €7 million as well. We mentioned Christian Teo earlier. It'll be interesting to see if Kike Setien can get the very, very best out of him in the season to come. Fidal is coming from Alaves. Another good signing for them would be an established player like Javi Garcia. He's come in from Zenit St. Petersburg, the 30-year-old midfielder, 1.5 million euros. They brought in Jordi Ama on loan from Swansea City and Antonio Balagan on loan from Middlesbrough as well. So I think they've done really, really good things this summer. They've got a good coach. They've made some really good signings. And it's going to be interesting to see how quickly they can gel and how good they can be this season. They have pretty much balanced their books. They've signed a lot of players, but they have sold, you know, Danny Sabayas to Real Madrid, 17 million euros, which really helped them out this summer 
they've been able to do a lot of things with that money. They've sold Cristiano Pacini to Sporting for around €3 million. Euros. Petros has gone to back to Brazil. One notable other absentee for Real Betis would be the striker Ruben Castro. He has gone on loan to China, but he is 36 years old now, so I think it's time they moved on from him, although he has been a consistent goal scorer for them for the last few seasons in La Liga. It is about time now they started relying on somebody else, and he has gone to China, and it is unknown yet whether that move will be made permanent in the near future. We're going to look now at Deportivo La Coruña, who brought in Guillerme from Udinese for around 4.5 million euros. Fabian Schaar has come in from Hoffenheim for 2 million euros. That could be a good signing. Very athletic centre back. Very good on the ball. He could be a good signing for Deportivo La Coruña. Valentin has come in from Gymnastique for 1 million euros. And they've also managed to land Bacali on loan from Valencia. Adrian Lopez, the striker from Porto, on loan as well. And Frederico Valverde has also arrived on loan from Real Madrid Castilla. Deportivo have sold the likes of Pablo Insua to Schalke that Lux has gone to River Plate, Laure to Alcorcon, Oriel Riera has gone to Australia to play, Fagir has gone to Hetafe on a free transfer, and Bergantinos has gone to Sporting Gijon on loan. But I think a decent summer for Deportivo La Coruña. They're very, very interested in trying to bring back their old striker, Lucas Perez, from Arsenal. He wants out of the club. Arsenal want to sell him, but it's just whether Deportivo have got the money this summer to go and sign a player who will no doubt cost around £10 million and more, possibly, which could be money that they simply don't have. <laughs> Leganes, who just about survived last season, I think they did outstandingly well. The squad that they have wasn't very expansive at all. They didn't spend much money, but they still managed to survive, and they had a really, really good season. They did a lot of credit for that. They brought in Sobias from Olympiacos, a central defender from Greece. He's cost around €3 million. Euros. They've also signed Munoz, who's come in from the Serie A uh, from Genoa for around €2.5 million. Euros. Tito, as well, has come in from Granada for around 600000 Raul Garcia from Alaves, not the one from Athletic Club. He's coming on a free transfer. And as well, Gerard Gumbau, formerly of Barcelona B, has come in on a free transfer. But like a lot of clubs, like I say, Leganes this summer have just spent €6 million. Euros. A lot of their transfers have come in on frees and also a few have come in on loans as well. But they haven't sold a great deal. They have not made any money in the transfer market. They have managed to keep all of their squad together. And now it's time to look into the newly promoted team starting with the Levante, they brought in Emmanuel Boateng, a striker from Portugal. He's come in for €2 million. Euros. He came in from Morentz in Liga Nos. Schenk Diacore has come in from Metz for Liga An for €1.6 million. Euros. But a lot of these signings from Levante do look like the signings of a club who's just come up. Not an awful lot of money at all. They spent just €6.5 million. Euros. This summer they brought in Antonio Luna from Eibar on a free transfer. That could be a decent deal. And they've also signed from Barcelona B goalkeeper Oya Lazabal, he's come in for around 200,000 euros from Granada. They have made some big sales though, which could impact them quite a bit. Davison has gone back to Brazil, the striker who's been very prolific for them in recent seasons. He's gone back for around 5 million euros. Victor Camarasa, like I mentioned, has gone to Real Betis for 7 million euros as well. And they have lost a few key players there, but I think overall Levante have got enough about them to stay up. You know, if they can be, you know, together, they can be willing, they can fight, and they will certainly do that but I think they could be one of the favourites to go back down this summer they haven't strengthened a great deal and they have not got quite enough in their squad I think to survive in the coming season Corona, the newly promoted side we spoke about earlier, they actually announced a partnership with Manchester City so they do have quite a lot of those players coming in from Man City on loan, they've got Bernardo Espinosa who they signed from Middlesbrough for around 4.5 million euros, I mentioned earlier the veteran goalkeeper Erasos has come in from Athletic Club on a free transfer, they They've also signed Jose Suarez from Barcelona to be quite an exciting young goalkeeper on a free transfer, just 21 years old. They've got Carlos Planas from Celta Vigo on a free transfer. Christian Stuani has arrived from Middlesbrough. That could be a good signing for them. Quite an established La Liga player, formerly of Espanyol. Alex Garcia has come in from Manchester City on loan. That could be a good signing. Every time I've watched him, you know, he's a young player, just 20 years old. Very, very exciting. Mark Muniesa, again, formerly of Barcelona, comes in on loan from Stoke City. 
Mendy, the central defender, 25 years old now. Marlos Moreno, another player coming in from Manchester City on loan. And another one as well, Douglas Luiz, the centre midfielder from Brazil, just 19 years old, comes in on loan from Man City. So they had a lot of help, Arona, this season from the likes of City. They've got a lot of former Barcelona players in their side as well. And it'll be interesting to see what they can do going forward. They've managed to keep a lot of their squad together, the squad that came up. And it'll be very interesting to see how they do because I'm excited to watch what they what they can do in La Liga, what they can sort of celebrate. They're very, very happy to be in La Liga, but of course, the aim is always to stay there. And the final team that we're going to discuss is Hetafe, who brought in Ndai from Atletico Madrid, which I mentioned earlier, the 21-year-old striker for th- around 3 million euros. They've also brought in Patillo from Real Betis. He'll come in for 1.5 million euros. Milanovic will come in from Red Star, the goalkeeper, 1.25 million euros for him. So they brought in quite a lot of players at Afe. Uh, I would say, you know, over 10 players have actually joined the club this summer on free transfers, on loans, on very small budget, like we say with many of the teams. But they haven't also let many players go. But that's about all they've done in the market. They haven't really brought in anybody of significance. They brought in more quantity than quality, I would say, which you could say for a lot of the teams, especially those that come up, they try to bring in a lot of new faces, which I don't actually think is the way to go. If it was me, I would actually try and stick with the squad that came up, try and keep everybody together because the most important thing is always that team spirit you know to see the clubs that stay up they have a tremendous fight they have a good understanding and I think it's really important when you come up to keep those real ethics that got you there you know keep the players the coaches that teamwork that got you to the league in the first place but Hitafe have brought in a lot of players this summer So having looked at all the teams and the business that the clubs have done over the course of the summer, I've actually highlighted three clubs that I think have done the best business in terms of both buying and selling, how they've replaced certain players or the sort of quality of players that they brought in. I would say, like I mentioned earlier, Real Betis under Kike Seti and have had a really, really good summer. I'm really, really impressed with the players that they brought in. They sold Danny Ceballos, they gathered their funds from that sale and with that they sort of brought strength to their entire squad. The likes of Camarasa, Budaboos, Teo, Sergio Leon, Guardado, Fidel, Javi Garcia. I'm really, really excited to see all of the players and how they line up and certainly how they do in the coming season. I think Villarreal, or another one that I mentioned, have done really, really good business over the course of the summer. I think the arrival of Carlos Backer as a striker back in La Liga could really, really impress for them in the coming season. I think Unal and Semedo are good young players, fresh young players, and I think pa- Pablo Fernandes as well from Malaga could have a real breakthrough season. And I would also say about Sevilla, I think they've lost players, of course they have, they do every summer, but even without Monchi, they've still replaced them. The likes of Muriel, if he can get scoring, could go on a real run. I think Kier is a good centre-back to bring in. I think Nolito, Navas, they've got La Liga experience, they can score goals, they can create goals. I think Benega could be a really key signing for them. He didn't really work out at Inter Milan, but he really shone the last time he's at Sevilla. And I think, like I mentioned earlier, Corchia could be a really, really good signing for them. So those are the three that I feel have done the best business. I think they haven't spent, you know, outrageous amounts of money, but they've certainly brought in what their squad needed. They're under good coaches, and I think they can expect really good things in the coming season from those sides. That does bring me on to my La Liga predictions, and of course, it's very, very difficult season upon season. I think there's a very tight battle for fourth place, and I think that won't change this season. There's always a very, very exciting relegation battle in La Liga, but it's actually a lot more competitive than it's actually given credit for. There will be a real title scrap once again this season, and even though Atletico Madrid haven't been able to bring in players, I think the title race will be, no doubt, a three-horse race. I think the likes of Sevilla, Villarreal, Real Sociedad, Athletic Club will all be competing for those Europa League places and that fourth Champions League spot. But even then, you've got clubs like Celta Vigo, like Real Betis, like Valencia, of course, who will be trying to get back into Europe to try and to overachieve in the season to come under new coaches. There will be people who are trying to make big first impressions 
and I think it'll actually be one of the most competitive seasons in La Liga history this season. I think Real Madrid are strong. I don't think they've strengthened immensely this summer. I think they've actually weakened their squad. They've lost players who were important to their rotation last season. The likes of Alvaro Morata, James Rodriguez, even if they weren't key players, they still were a part of their squads. Danilo as well. I think they brought in young talent, but I don't think they brought in the star quality that we usually expect from Real Madrid. As a Barcelona fan, I can personally say our summer right now has not been a success. We have not strengthened our squad. And I think what that leads us to is actually Atletico Madrid in their new stadium under Diego Simeone still competing again. I think they've kept their squad together, although they haven't strengthened it just yet because of the ban they will be able to in the second half of the season. They've got a very strong unit there. They've got a fantastic group of supporters who will help them in every single home game. And you cannot underrate the importance of keeping Diego Simeone at the club. He is the pioneer for everything they do. He's a fantastic coach. He's got his players understanding their roles, understanding their style of play down to a T. And I think once again this season, you cannot, you cannot underestimate the importance of Diego Simeone. In terms of the relegation battle, like I said earlier, I think the likes of Levante and Hetafe, both of them haven't really strengthened since they've been promoted. I would tip both of them, actually, to go back down. I think Levante and Hetafe will be relegated in the coming season. Then, for that third relegation place, I think it's going to be a scrap. I think the likes of Leganes could be involved again. I think, obviously, Hirona are going to find it very, very difficult to stay up, but I think they might just manage it. I think the likes of Deportivo, as well, could be scrapping with relegation and I really do fear the worst if Malaga don't bring in some players I think they've got to bring in some quality they've got to strengthen their squad but if I had to pick one I would say it would be Leganes Le- Levante and-, and Hetafe going down this season I think Barcelona will win the league and the reason I say that is I just think, and I really hope that we do, I will never say anything different to that. Even though I'm probably supposed to be neutral right now, I can't go against Barcelona. Even if I think that Real Madrid are so strong right now, they've got uh, advantages in every department off the pitch. You know, they've got good decisions going on at board level, but I still can't go against Barcelona. So I'm going to go Barcelona top, Real Madrid second, Atletico Madrid third, and this is the most important and difficult decision of the whole podcast. I can't decide who to go with fourth, Sevilla or Villarreal. Both of them have spent well. Both of them have reinforced well. It could come down to the coaches. I think I would go with Sevilla under Barizzo. I think they will perform in that fourth place. I think they'll have a good season. I think they've got the right tools to get the job done. And I think they will get that fourth Champions League slot. It will be a very, very good battle. But I do think the Villarreal will finish in that fifth position. Sixth is going to be really interesting. You know, is it going to be Real Sociedad once again? Is it going to be Athletic? Are they going to challenge? Is it going to be possibly Valencia if they have a good season? Celta Vigo are more possibilities. You don't know how much Betis are going to improve in the coming season. So I think it's going to be a very, very difficult decision I would once again go with Real Sociedad to get that sixth spot and then you look at the bottom half the likes of Deportivo, Leganes, Alaves, Malaga in the bottom half as well you know the newly promoted side so I think it's going to be really really competitive the decisions that I'm making for these predictions are very difficult and the reason for that is the league is competitive despite what people will tell you this league right throughout has quality has teams that can cause an upset on any given day it's not all six nils it's not all five nils this is a competitive league with quality players and as well quality coaches as well which is a very very important part of this league so I hope you all enjoyed this podcast I hope you all enjoyed the season preview for La Liga. There will be podcasts coming every single week. What I'm going to be doing is mostly doing a podcast on a Monday. I'll be releasing that after the weekend's fixtures. I'll be looking at all the games in more detail and looking at the implications on that in the league table. If we have a look at the fixtures that are going to be coming up this weekend in the first weekend of La Liga, we're going to be looking at local time for these. Leganes take on Alaves this evening at quarter past eight in Spain. Valencia take on Las Palmas later on tonight at quarter past 10. That is going to be a very exciting game. Can Valencia get off to a good start? That's going to be really, really important because momentum, like I spoke about the crowd, that's going to be so vital going into their season if they can start well and get that positivity back at the Mestalla. Then on Saturday at quarter past 6, we've got Celta Vigo against Sociedad. Girona in their first La Liga game will take on Atletico Madrid. That's going to be a fantastic game. Really interested to see how that one ends up. Sevilla take on Espanyol at quarter 
half past ten on Saturday night. And then on Sunday, the fixtures begin for the big boys, Real Madrid and Barcelona, both in action. But first, it will be Athletic Club against Hitafe at quarter past six. Barcelona will take on Real Betis at quarter past eight. And the final game of the weekend on that Sunday will be Deportivo La Coruña against Real Madrid. There will be two Monday night games newly promoted. Levante will be taking on Villarreal. That will be an interesting game. Their first game back in La Liga. And Malaga will finish game week one at home against Eibar at La Rosaleda. So it's going to be very, very interesting. I'm really excited for the new La Liga season. I think there's a number of exciting players that's joined the league. It's going to be good to see how they adapt. Good to see how clubs can go from strength to strength over the course of the season. Leave your La Liga thoughts down below. What are your predictions for the coming season? Who do you think is going to win the league? Who do you think can go down? And do you agree with my predictions? Who do you think is going to occupy that fourth Champions League place? Let me know your thoughts down below, guys. I appreciate all your support and all your comments, as always. I will see you very, very soon with more videos, and I will be here with yet another La Liga podcast on Monday once we've seen how the first round of games unfolds. I'll see you then, but until then, as always, Vesca, El Barça. Barça.